Dear Jesus, we come here this morning because of your grace, because of your mercy, because of your love, because you cover us in the blood of the Lamb that I have to take away the sins of the world. That world is us. We need you, Lord. Take over this place. Pour out a double portion of your Holy Spirit upon each one of us. And talk to our hearts. Work miracles in our lives of healing. Physical healing, spiritual healing, mental healing, Lord. I pray for everybody here and their families, their marriages, their children, grandchildren. I pray for our community, Lord. Rain upon them and touch them with your love. Thank you, Father. I ask that you speak to us this morning and not me. May Jesus be lifted up. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Title to the sermon today is Get Rid of the Frog. You got to get rid of the what? The frog. What's Pastor talking about? He crazy. Well, as the sermon goes on, you'll find out what the frog is. Amen? Amen. She was a young little girl, about two years old, beautiful little girl. And uh, the joy of her mother's eye. The mother was an older woman, always wanted to have children, but didn't have children. And when the mother was in her 40s, she got pregnant and had her. And it was the joy of her life. And uh, when the little girl was two years old, the mother started feeling sick. And she started bleeding and hemorrhaging and went to the doctors. And she had a cancer. And it was all over her body. They couldn't operate. They couldn't do anything. And so she passed away. And this little girl, two years old, the mother, the apple of the mother's eye, you know, and was there with the father who was broken hearted, destroyed. The love of his life is just died, and now it's just him and the little girl, right? And I think sometimes a man can get desperate in a situation like that. And he clung to the first woman that he found. And this woman wanted him as a husband, but wasn't particularly fond of the little girl. You ever watch Cinderella? So this little girl moves in with this new stepmom who happens to have several kids of her own. And the stepmom treats the husband very good, treats her children super good, but on a regular basis neglects ignores, mistreats the little girl. Very quiet, most people don't know about it. The little girl tells her story and I'm listening to it, you know, as she's gotten older. When the little girl is 15, her father gets sick. The only true family that she has is this father She's in this dysfunctional home with a stepmom and stepbrothers that don't treat her like she belongs. And now the love of her life is in the hospital dying. And this young man, because he was a young man, really, he dies. And leaves this 15-year-old brokenhearted and alone. After the funeral service, the young girl goes to her home where her stepmom and the stepkids live, brothers live. And as she's getting to the house, she looks in the, in the garage, in the front of the garage door, are her little uh, bags of her things, her little clothes and her little luggage. The stepmom kicked her out. I spent a lot of time with this young girl, 15-year-old girl, just listening to her cry. She's a mourning orphan with no place to go. And she was angry. She was furious and mad at her stepmom. Can you blame her? 
But what happens is this, sometimes when bad things happen to you, when you lose a parent and you lose a parent, and then you're mistreated by those who are supposed to take care of you, you not only get mad at those people, you start getting mad at God. Why did you let this happen to me? I don't understand. You start blaming yourself, you think maybe you're no good. Maybe you're being punished for the bad things that are happening to you. At least that's what the devil whispers in your ear. Because he'll, he'll attack you. He'll use people to attack you. And then he'll whisper in your ear, this is God doing it. Because you're not worthy. Because you're a sinner. Because you're no good. Isn't that horrible? This devil is something else. And maybe you today can relate with this young girl. Maybe someone has hurt you in your life. And, and, and worst of all, not only did they hurt you, but years have passed by and you're still carrying the pain. You're still angry inside. And you've been like that for years. You try to hide it, but it pops out. Can you relate? Maybe these people that have caused you pain have made you a person that is hard for you to trust. It's hard for you to be vulnerable. It's hard for you to open up because you're afraid that the people around you are just going to keep hurting you. And so you live a life like this. Almost paranoid that people are evil and they're going to hurt you. And it keeps you from loving. It keeps you from having joy in your life. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, in your anger, you're going to get angry. It's normal. In your anger, do not sin. And then it gives you, he, he gives us some counsel to help us. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Here we are holding on to things that have happened to us for decades. And Jesus is telling us in his word, <laughs> don't let the sun go down. <laughs> Amen? Deal with it immediately is what he's saying. Do you hear it, church? Yes. Because if we don't, it'll fester. It'll grow. It'll destroy do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And here's the, the catchphrase. Here's the motive behind the scenes. Here's your unveiling so that we can see the big picture. So that we can find out what's really going on. And do not give the devil a foothold. Because that is his strategy. He is the one orchestrating and attacking and using all this. In order to get a stronghold into your heart. In order to destroy you and me. A study was done and they took men who score highly for hostility on a standard test. They gave this test and the men who scored highly on hostility were four times more likely to, prema to die prematurely than men who scored lows. That's just a test by some organization, some university, and they find out if men that are angry, that hold on to that anger, men that do not deal with it when the sun goes down, right? A man that hold on to it are four times likely to die what? Prematurely. How many of you want to die prematurely? Let's raise your hands, please. Thank you very much. Nobody? Come on. Die prematurely. Angry, cynical people, they die young and the devil knows that. The devil is a, a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Yes. He's in the business of wanting to kill you. Did you know that? He doesn't like you. He can't stand you. He wants to get rid of you. There's a national park and there's a ranger there in British Columbia. And if you go to his office, he has two sets of these huge antlers as wide as a man's reach locked together. I don't know if that makes sense. Real big. 
And what happened was there was these two, these two bull moose, moose. I can't even speak today. These two bull moose, and they began fighting, and their antlers got locked together, and they could not get them free, and they died stuck together. And so he took them and go, I'm going to take that. That's a reminder to me of what all this fighting can do to my life. Some of us are here married to people and we're still remembering things that happened that they did to us from 20 years ago and we don't forgive them. And you wonder why you don't have intimacy in your marriage. Why you, there's a wall and you can't trust and, and you can't get along. It's because you haven't forgiven each other. You gotta let junk go. Forgive and forget and don't bring it up no more. Do you understand? Because if you don't, you're just destroying the rest of your relationship. We got to get rid of that stuff. Amen? We got to deal with the stuff that's blocking us. So there's this rich guy, right? And he decides that on top of a mountain, he's going to build his dream home. It's going to cost lots and lots of money. So he liquidates his things. He sells things. And he says, I'm going to spend everything I got. I'm building this beautiful house on top of that mountain. And I'm going to be happy living on my mountain house. That's what he thinks. And he watches them as the construction people build this house. And he's all excited. And he can't wait till the day that he moves in. And he finally gets the chance to move in. He's all excited in his house at the view that he has. And he decides, you know what, I'm gonna take a shower. And when he goes, takes a shower, he turns it on, expecting this powerful flood of water to come down. Ain't nothing coming out. He spent millions building this house and the shower don't work. You know what that is? I would be furious. And so he picks up the phone and he calls the contractor with an attitude. Yo man, I just spent millions and this thing ain't working. You better send somebody over here. So they send the plumber immediately. And he checks out the shower and he follows the thing and doesn't see anything wrong. So then he has this machine and he starts following the, the pipe. And what this does is this machine can x-ray, I guess, or whatever it does, look through the ground, through the cement, and can see where there's a broken pipe. And he finally finds a spot and he starts digging and he finds the pipe that's broken. To his surprise, he found what broke the pipe. A frog had gone in there when there was no water still, and he gotten stuck in the pipe. And so when the water was turned on at that spot, poof, it broke. Get rid of the frog. Get rid of the frog. What are you talking about? Get rid of those anger and resentment and issues that you have against people, against the church, against God, against your spouse, against whoever. Get rid of that. Against your brother, your sister, your mom, and your dad, whether they're alive or dead. Get rid of that stuff that's in your heart because it's blocking Amen. the water of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. You've got to forgive yourself for the junk that you've done in your life. Because that'll be the fog that blocks the Holy Spirit from falling in your life. Get rid of the frog. Preacher girl. Is there a song that goes like that? Tally, do we got a song? Get rid of the frog. I'm going to write one. Get rid of the frog. So how do I get rid of the frog? Come on, girl, preach. You got to take it to the doctor. You got to call the plumber. You got to bring it to Jesus. You got to give it to the doctor. You got to get somebody to help you is the point. Because you can't do it on your own. That's the problem. We try to forgive. We try to do things on our own. There's anger, resentment, unforgiveness that's blocking the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. 
and it makes us miserable. We keep replaying these negative memories, this, what they did to me. We keep playing it in our minds, and it makes us matter and matter. And we stay angry, and the people that hurt us, they forgot about us. They don't even know that they, they hurt us. And we're replaying it over and over and over and over again. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. I got to say, I'm going to add to this, Lord, forgive me. If you don't forgive yourself, you fall on a thing in the same category. If we forgive, God forgives. Did you hear it? If we forgive, then God forgives. It's conditional. But if we don't forgive, God won't forgive us. To forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner is you. That's why the Bible says, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger and rage and malice and slander and filthy language from your lips. Colossians 3.8. Amen. Get rid of the fraud. Get rid of the hurt. We must follow the example of Jesus. My friends, he was betrayed. And it wasn't just Judas that betrayed him. It wasn't just Peter and these guys that turned their backs on him. It was you and me. He was betrayed. He was denied. We've denied him. He was falsely accused. He was sentenced to death. Our sin sentenced him to death. He was whipped and he was punched. He was spat upon. They pulled out his beard. They nailed him to a cross. And then they made fun of him. And through it all, he did not fight back. Through it all, he didn't start yelling curses. He didn't make threats. My dad's going to get you. <laughs> but instead, he was praying for those that were hurting him. Did you hear that? When's the last time you prayed for the people that hurt you? Maybe there's a secret there. Can't stay too mad at somebody you're praying for. Instead of looking at them with hate, he looked at them with love. And as he lay there ready to die, as he was ready to die, he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Jesus forgave. And Jesus has forgiven us of all the horrible things that we did to him and we've done to each other. And now we must follow his example. And we got to start forgiving each other. I don't want to hear anybody in this church come to me complaining about another church member. I'm just going to say get rid of the frog. Don't sit back here complaining. Don't be coming to my house complaining. Get rid of the frog. Forgive. Forget. Pray for. Amen? Amen. Is this biblical or is this Pastor Robbie? Having eating too much veggie links this morning. So how do we do it? Because this is hard. It ain't easy. Go on, girl. It ain't easy. He did that to me. I did it. I was his little girl. He did that to me. It ain't easy. I can't believe you did that. After all the years we've been married, I can't believe you did what? You. <laughs> it's not easy. But all things are possible through Jesus Christ. He's in the business of working miracles. And if he did it on that cross, you and I can do it. He's our example. We need to go to the doctor. Listen up. Want to get rid of the frog? You go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, like, I think I was like 12. And I was sleeping. And I woke up 
and I couldn't move my leg. 12 year old, they jump out of bed, ready to run, you know? I couldn't move, like my leg, what? And I was in pain, and I looked down, and it was actually this leg, and my calf has swollen up. Like, like it was the size of a, like a, a, an orange, you know what I mean? And it was big, and it was hurting, and it was pulsating. And the 12 year old tough guy cried, Mom! <laughs> Mommy, get out of here! And I'll, I'll be wimp when it comes to, if mom's around, I mellow out. <laughs> and she comes, what's wrong, what's wrong? I can't move my leg and it hurts. I can't move my And she looked at it and Puerto Rican mom, she, you know, like, oh my goodness, we need to go to the hospital now, you know? <laughs> so off to the hospital we go. And I'm sitting there and the doctor comes in and he looks at it. He goes, you got bit by a poisonous spider. And we got to do something to take care of this immediately. Uh, you know, I was afraid they were going to give me a shot. That was my fear. That was my biggest fear. He comes out with a scalpel. Scalpel? Am I saying that right? Yes. How do you say it? Scalpel. A scalpel. He comes out with a scalpel. Forget the injection. I was like, oh, no! <laughs> and he lands it. Smack in the middle of the thing. And all of a sudden, Blood started coming out, but forgive me, but all kinds of colors started coming out. Purple, man, the colors I had, what? It's like a rainbow, skittles everywhere, just, you know? And then he kept doing this to it. He kept like squeezing it and squeezing it. He said, I have to get all that stuff out of there. I gotta get all that poison out. I gotta get that clean. And he kept pouring some stuff into it and he kept pushing it all out and pushing it all out. But the more he was doing it, the better I felt and the pain was leaving my body. Amen. And then when it was all done, he goes, I'm done. I was able to move my leg and I didn't feel that pulsating pain anymore. We need to ask Jesus to come into our hearts and cut us with a scalpel yeah. and get that junk out of our hearts, out of our minds. Get rid of that frog. Get rid of that pain. Get rid of that resent resentment and anger and hatred that has gotten in there. Get rid of those demons yes. that somehow have stayed in there. It's funny how we can be fountains of, of good water and at the same time have dirty, nasty water inside of us. Ask God to get rid of that putrid stuff that's inside of us. Because only then will we be able to forgive people. Only then will we be able to love people. Only then will we be able to trust people. Only then will we be have complete, allow complete access to the Holy Spirit to flow through us. We're blocking what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives, and we're becoming spiritual zombies. We're becoming, we don't grow spiritually, and we don't know why. I read the word, and I, I go to church all the time, but you're still the same old angry, mean person you've always been. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I'm here and I go to church, but I'm still cursing and mean and nasty to people and um, because you got some junk that needs to be gotten rid of. And I want you to catch this line, and you know this better than I do. There was no way on earth that I could operate on my own calf. Too much pain. I don't think I could stick a knife in my thing like that and dig it all out. I cried like a little baby. It ain't happening. I'd rather walk around. <laughs> Then stick something in my leg. You and I can't do this on our own. We need to say, Lord, help me. He's not asking you to come perfect to him. He's not asking you, come to Jesus when you got your life all together. No, you come to Jesus with the busted leg. You come to Jesus with the frog stuck in the pipe. You come to Jesus stuck in your sin. You come to Jesus in your addiction, in the midst of it. You come to Jesus no matter how messed up you are. And he don't reject you. And he don't say you're no good. He don't say you're a sinner. Get out of my face. He goes, come here, baby. I'm going to take care of this. Amen. 
and he heals you and he saves you and he takes care of you and he brings you peace and joy and happiness in your life. Amen. Amen. Do you want that in your life? Yes. Do you want that in your life? Yes. I need that in my life. Yes. Jesus, we come to you today. Get rid of the frog, Lord. The frogs, they're plural. Get rid of that poison that lives inside of us. Get rid of those demons. Get rid of that hatred. Help us to forgive. Help us to forget. Help us to love. Thank you, Father, that you don't reject us. That your grace is tremendous. That nothing, nothing's greater than your grace. Amen. Bless everyone here, Lord, and cause, cause miracles in our lives. Do surgery in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.